Hello everybody, welcome to Intutorials. Um, today we'll be discussing basic past questions 2019 paper 1. Now as you prepare for your basic exam or your junior YEC, this video is going to be of vital use to you. Now this is Intutorials. Um, we want you to hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that you can get more videos from us. We're going to be releasing several contents that will benefit you as you study, especially um, during this period as you prepare for your exam so just keep the um click the subscribe button so that you can get more videos from us okay the first question says what's the place value of seven in the number five two six point nine seven okay so um we want to know the place value of um, seven so this is five two six dot nine seven now you know that this five here it's um the hundreds now two it's tens now six it's um units now here we have nine tenths now for here we now have seven hundreds so automatically seven um the place value of seven it's seven hundred and the final answer it's e e is the correct answer okay so question two says express 0 0.00001208 so we write down our number so we can express it as um standard form so this is going to now be move your decimal places but count so this is going to be we count as we move one two three four and five so this is going to be 1.208 times 10 raised to the power 5. We moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So it's going to be minus 5 because we are moving towards um, the right hand side. So our final answer is going to be um, 1.208 times 10 raised to the power minus 5. That C is the correct answer. So the next question it's um question three it says approximate 0 0.0.007349 to three significant figures now the significant figures when you have a decimal place are the whole numbers so this is the first significant figure this is the second significant figure second and this is what the third so because we have a nine here we're going to approximate this nine so approximating your nine you're going to have seven three instead of writing four you now write five so this is the correct answer which is going to be d okay then uh, the next question says find the positive difference between minus eight and minus 14. now the positive difference positive difference is giving us bigger number minus smaller number okay so how do you know which one is the bigger number and the smaller number if you understand your number line very well so let's say let's draw a number line this is zero now this is our line now remember that this is the positive and this is the negative let's assume this is five four three two one and this is our zero here is one two three four now notice five it's um bigger than four and four is bigger than three and so on one is bigger than zero and zero this is going to be minus sorry so zero is bigger than minus one minus one is bigger than minus two so that means minus eight is greater than minus 14. so to get our positive difference our positive difference is going to be our bigger number is minus eight minus then our smaller number is going to be minus 14. now what this means is minus 8 when you have minus times minus the rule is minus times minus gives you plus minus times plus gives you minus plus times minus gives you minus so minus times minus is now plus 14. so this is going to be minus 8 plus 14 and that is going to give us um that's going to give us six so our final answer is six so the correct answer here is E. E is the correct answer. So let's forge ahead. 
Now, the next question says simplify this number. Now, just like we stated this um, sign rule, minus 3 minus minus to, um, 21, 21 minus 18. Now, minus 3, the minus will times minus to give us plus 21 minus 18. Now, this is going to be minus 3 plus 21 minus 18 is going to give us um, um, plus 3. So when you have minus 3 plus 3, it's like you're owing 3 naira and you have 3 naira. When you pay, it will not be 0. So the final answer, it's 0. Okay? So the next question says evaluate 1 over 2 raised to power minus 2. Now, this is an indices question. Now, there are two ways to solve this. I'm going to teach you both of them. Now, first of all, know that in indices, there's a rule that says when you have x raised to power minus 2, you can decide to change it to be 1 over x and say all squared. So that's one rule. Then the second rule is if you have something like 1 over x all raised to power um, minus 2, you can decide to also invert the number and say this would be also the same thing as x over 1 all squared. So whichever one you want to do, it's fine. So um, now, to solve this question, it's not going to be, if we have half raised to power minus 2, this is going to be, um, using the first rule, we're going to have 1 over 1 divided by 2 all squared. This is going to give us 1 over 1 over 2 all squared will give us 1 over 4, so which will be 1 divided by 1 over 4, which is equal to 1 times 4 over 1, which will give us 4. So our final answer is 4. So a second way to solve this question is using this method, which would be instead of saying, um, you now say, instead of writing 1 over 2, you now invert it 2 over 1, then you now change the sign to positive. 2 over 1 all squared will still give you 4. So whichever one is easier for you, you can use the method. Okay, so the next question, okay, this says evaluate square root of, um, square root of 2, 7 over 9. First of all, change this to an improper fraction. 9 times 2 is going to give us 18. 18 plus 7 will be 25 over 9. So now this is square root of 25 over 9. Now the square root of 25 it's, um, first of all, you also need to know that in square root, if you have square root of A over B, this is the same thing as square root of A over square root of B. So this is the same thing as square root of 25 divided by square root of 9. So this is going to be, square root of 25 is going to give us 5, square root of 9 is going to give us 3. So converting this to a proper fraction, this is going to be 1 whole number, 2 over 3. So our final answer is C. So C is the correct answer. So the next question is question 8. Now, it says simplify this. Now this is a ratio. So the first thing I'll do is convert it to an improper fraction. 2 whole number 1 over 5 is 2. 2 whole number 2 over 3. So now this is going to be 5 times 2, 10 plus 1. That's 11 over 5 is 2. Um, this will be 3 times 2, 6 plus 2. This will be 8 over 3. Now, this is ratio. Because you're trying to get the ratio, you can decide to cross multiply. So this is going to be 11 times 3 is 2, 8 times 5. So this is going to be 33 is 2, 40. So our final answer is C. So C is the correct answer. Then uh, the next question is um, 9. It says, find the smallest number by which 60 must be multiplied to give a perfect square. Now, we're trying to know the number in which one will multiply it by 60. It will give us a perfect square. Now, you should understand your perfect squares. Your perfect squares are number like 4. Numbers are when you look for the square root, you get 2. Um, 4 is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square, which is a 3. 25 is a perfect square, which is a 5. 16 is a perfect square, which is 4. So, 60, we'll test the number. 60 times 3, it's 1, it's, no, this is not a perfect square. Um, 60 times 5, it's 300. It's not a perfect square. 60 times 
six is three sixty. Three sixty is not a perfect square. Sixty times ten is six hundred. Six hundred is not a perfect square. Sixty times fifteen it's nine hundred. Yes, nine hundred is a perfect square because when you find the square root of nine hundred, you get um, thirty because thirty times thirty will give you nine hundred. So our final answer is A. So yeah, A is the correct answer. Okay. So um, our next question is um, question ten. It says find the LCM of um, fifteen, twenty-five, and thirty-five. So we have fifteen, we have twenty-five, and we have thirty-five. So we're going to divide through, starting with um, three because two cannot divide. So three into fifteen it's um, five. Three into twenty-five will still give us twenty-five. Three into thirty-five will still be thirty-five. Now the next divisible number is five. So five into five is going to be one. Five into twenty-five is going to give us um, five. 5 into 35 is going to give us 7. So 5 can still go again, which is 1, 5, 1, 1, 7. Then 7 will now go 1, 1, 1. So we we'll multiply out our number 3, but 3 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 5 times 7. 3 times 5 will give us 15. 15 times 5 will give us um, 75 times 7. So let's do our multiplication. So 7 times 5 will give us 35, carry 3, 7 times 7 is 49, plus 3, that will be 52. So our final answer, it's going to be 5, 2, 5. So um, B is the correct answer. B is the correct answer.